Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrison. Normally I film these videos in the forest, sometimes deep within the forest, where there's nothing but forest for hundreds, sometimes thousands of acres. Today's a little different. So right now I'm currently in a woodland edge habitat, but right behind me you can see that it's very open. That's a kind of ecosystem that I don't really talk about too much on this channel, and that is the golf course ecosystem. Now, the golf course is a special kind of ecosystem. It's very open, it gets a lot of sunlight, there are random pits of sand, trees are widely spaced apart, and there's very little biodiversity anywhere. Personally, I'd much rather spend my time in a forest, but today I'm going to focus on the golf course ecosystem because new research sheds light on something associated with golf courses that seriously affects a lot of people, and I think it's important for you to hear it. Now it's no secret that to look a certain way, golf courses use heavy amounts of herbicides and insecticides along with fungicides and other chemical inputs. These chemicals evidently help to maintain pristine conditions, but their use raises significant environmental concerns because of the potential runoff into water sources, the potential contamination of surrounding ecosystems, and the potential exposure risks for workers and golfers. Now maybe you've heard of something called Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that primarily affects movement, but can cause a range of other physical and mental ailments. And while the exact cause is unknown, genetic and environmental factors are suspected. And wouldn't you know it, exposure to certain environmental toxins like pesticides has been implicated as a potential risk factor which is why a group of researchers recently looked at the association between living close to a golf course and the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. And what the researchers found in this brand new study was quite alarming. Researchers found a significant association between living close to a golf course and the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Individuals living within one to three miles of a golf course were at greatest risk. And this risk generally decreased with increasing distance from a golf course. The researchers also found that individuals living within one mile of a golf course had 126% increased odds of developing Parkinson's disease compared to people living more than six miles away. So what's going on here? What is it about living close to a golf course that's associated with developing Parkinson's disease? Is it breathing in airborne chemicals? Is it eating food from your garden that's been exposed to airborne drift from golf course chemicals? Is it groundwater contamination? Well, the researchers in this study found that the most significant increases in the odds of developing Parkinson's disease were associated with drinking water sources, possibly contaminated with pesticides. Individuals getting their drinking water from water service areas with a golf course had nearly double the odds of Parkinson's disease compared with individuals getting drinking water from water service areas without a golf course. The largest effect sizes were for the association of living within a water service area with a golf course in a vulnerable groundwater region. In these regions, individuals had 82% greater odds of developing Parkinson's disease compared with individuals in non-vulnerable groundwater regions. If you're wondering what a vulnerable groundwater region is, imagine land where the geology and soil support rapid and unfiltered movement of contaminants from the surface into underground water sources. Such regions might contain coarse textured soils, shallow bedrock, and perhaps even karst geology, which refers to a type of landscape where soft rocks like limestone or dolostone are dissolved by slightly acidic water. While water contamination appeared to be the most significant pathway in this study, the researchers also suggested that airborne pesticide drift, especially in denser urban areas surrounding golf courses, could contribute to exposure. Pretty interesting findings, but to tell you the truth, I'm not surprised at all. And perhaps you're not surprised. Epidemiologic studies have previously suggested a relatively consistent association between exposure to pesticides and an increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Having said that, there are a few limitations to this new study. No direct causal link was found. Only a correlation can be made between living close to a golf course and the odds of developing Parkinson's disease. Only people in Wisconsin and Minnesota were studied, and the researchers did not collect any information on their occupational histories. 
Still, the researchers concluded that their study provides evidence in support of an association between living within proximity to golf courses and the risk of developing Parkinson's disease, which is important information to know if you get your drinking water or plan to get your drinking water from a service area where a golf course exists especially if this area is in a vulnerable groundwater region, maybe with coarse textured soils, shallow bedrock, or karst geology. Now, because we sometimes talk about foraging on this channel, you might be wondering about foraging wild mushrooms and wild plants near golf courses. Now, most foragers probably know to avoid foraging anything growing directly on a golf course, because of all the toxic chemicals that are applied. But I'd still caution against foraging in adjacent habitats like woodlands and fields. This goes for foraging plants. This goes for foraging mushrooms too. And I'd be very mindful about hunting and eating animals like deer that feed on golf courses. Obviously, you're probably not going to hunt deer directly on a golf course, unless you have explicit permission to do so. But you might hunt deer whose feeding grounds include not only woodland habitats and edges, but golf courses as well. And deer bioaccumulate toxins, including pesticides, from the foods they eat. If you really care about your health and you want to source high quality nutrients for your body, I strongly encourage you to pay attention to what's being done to the ecosystems where your food and water comes from. Healthy ecosystems should not be associated with Parkinson's disease. Now, I'm not saying that all herbicide and pesticide-laced ecosystems are the same everywhere, or that they all have the same downstream effects everywhere all the time, but they do make you stop and wonder what the true costs of convenience, aesthetics, and pleasure really are. Thank you so much for watching this video. Truly appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you want to support this channel, please subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch and check out my online courses on ecology, tree identification, and foraging wild mushrooms. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video.